fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail, Silver. Hooray! And now, here's the Lone Ranger. You'll hear it said that someone was born to the saddle. That means he's a mighty good rider. But remember, like anyone else, he had to learn to ride. He probably took many spills doing it. He's good because he practiced. Rode every time he had a chance. In anything, not just riding. The winners are the fellows who train. Champions are made, not born. I'll agree, Lone Ranger. But is there anything besides practice a person can do to help his training? Absolutely. Eat the right foods. I'd like to pass along something the old pioneers knew. Wheat is one of the best all-around foods you can find for staying power and energy. Today's champions agree with the pioneers about wheat, Lone Ranger. Champions choose Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. Tonto, Indian companion to the Lone Ranger, was returning to Milton with Dan Reed, teenage nephew of the masked man, after a trip to San Antonio. They sat facing a well-dressed man who, noticing that the Indian's gaze was upon him, finally spoke. Well, in then, I suppose you recognize that large emblem hanging from my watch chain, huh? Ah, uh, that silver Thunderbird. I'm mighty proud of that Thunderbird emblem, even though it's so large. Took my eye right away. You going far, son? To Milton. So am I. I'm a bank examiner and be there a few days or so. Perhaps we'll meet again in town. At the rear of the car, four men sat together with hats pulled down and heads bent as if dozing. One of them, a tough Spaniard named Carlos, was talking in a low tone. Soon we shall approach the Cottonwood Grove, two miles this side of Milton, where Joe is waiting with our horses. Right. It is time for us to act, amigos. I'm going now. Nobody paid any attention as Carlos made his way up the aisle. Then... Reach, everybody! Do not move! Three of my friends are behind you with drawn guns. The first one who tries anything will get a bullet. Now we search order you. Carlos started at one end of the car and one of his followers at the other. They went from passenger to passenger, robbing them of money and valuables. Senores, have you finished with the search back there? Yeah, we got everything. It's time to leave. I'll pull this signal cord. Adios, everyone. Hurry up, amigos. Hurry. When the train arrived at Milton, the robbery was reported to the sheriff, who immediately started with a posse to hunt the outlaws. Toto and Dan Reed went to the livery stable for their horses, then rode to a camp in the nearby hills where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Dan and Toto told the masked man about the robbery. Toto had recognized the Spanish outlaw, Carlos Paso. Meantime, in a small farmhouse a few miles from town, Carlos was talking to a short, stout man named Pete, who owned the place. <laughs> well, Pete, we have bring back plenty of cash, along with the valuables there on the table. Hey, here's something that's different. Look at this chain and emblem. Oh, you take the chain and the strange bird emblem to wear, Pete. I do not care. Oh, thanks, thanks. Hey, are you sure you covered your trail coming here? See, si, of course. That sheriff will lose himself in the hills looking for us. In a day or two... 
You ride to town and find out if this search is over. As Carlos predicted, the sheriff and his posse lost the trail. It was two days after the robbery when Dan Reed started for town. Easy, boy. Steady, fella. Come on, Victor. Halfway to town, Dan saw a horseman coming toward him. The boy was amused by the strange way in which the short, stout man rode. It was the first time he'd seen Pete and knew nothing about him. Howdy. Hello. As Pete passed him, Dan's gaze caught sight of the large Thunderbird emblem hanging from the chain across the man's vest. Dan turned in the saddle and looked after the stout man who went out of sight around the bend. Oh, Rubik to Hobo host, anyway. Golly, that looked like the big silver Thunderbird emblem Tano and I saw on the train. Just to make sure, I'll follow that fat man and see where he goes, Victor. Come on, fellas. Dan turned his horse and cautiously followed Pete along the trail. Once, as he started over a rise, he saw the man who had dismounted on the trail ahead and was picking a stone from his horse's oh, shoe with a stick. Boy. Dan waited until Pete remounted and rode on. Then he followed once more. Come on, Victor. As Dan approached the place where Pete had stopped, something on the ground glinted brightly in the sun. A closer look showed it to be the silver Thunderbird emblem. The connecting link was broken. Oh, oh Victor, hope stay more easy for... Gosh, this is the Thunderbird emblem, and he was wearing it. It's the one the man on the train wore. Dan put the large emblem in his saddlebag before mounting. He was more determined than ever to learn what he could about the short, stout man. Easy, boy, steady, fella. Come on, Victor. Pete had ridden about half a mile after remounting before he missed the emblem from the gold and silver chain. Who, who, there, who? Uh, I lost that silver bird. Uh, no telling where I dropped it. Pete had stopped just over a rise. He heard Victor's hoofbeats approaching and standing in the stirrups glanced back quickly. Uh, it's that boy I passed a while ago. He must have turned and followed me. I'll go behind those boulders yonder and catch him by surprise. Come on, get up there. Oh, there, hold, boy, hold. Stop where you are, boy. I got you covered. Oh, hold, Victor, hold, hold. Get up there. Oh, hello there, ho. Oh. Uh, what's the idea of following me? When I saw you a while ago, you are heading for town. Well, I was going to town. I changed my mind and decided to go back to join my friends. Now, look. This branch road left the main trail a short way back. And it leads to only one place. I haven't time to waste here with you. And I'm not letting you leave me until I know what's on your mind. Now, ride ahead of me along this trail. And remember, I'm holding the gun. Where are you taking me? <laughs> That's the way you were riding, isn't it? Well, go ahead. Keep on riding. And I'll be right behind you. Go on, I said. Come on, Victor. Come on, get up there. Pete took Dan to the farmhouse where Carlos and his three other companions were hiding out. Carlos studied Dan's features, then said, Ah, it comes to me now. This boy was on the train, Pete, I remember. He sat with the man who had the silver and gold chain, you... Uh, the bird emblem, Pete, where is it? Oh, I, I lost it. But the boy must have seen and recognized that unusual silver bird before you lost it. Then followed you to try to find our hideout. Yeah, I reckon that's it. You are smart, young one. And also foolish. Now that you are here, we cannot allow you to leave. What are you going to do with him, Carlos? We leave here after dark. We take him with us. Somewhere along the way, we shall get rid of him. Tie him and put him on the cot in the other room. They say curiosity kill the cat. He will find that curiosity also kill the boy. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Mother, daughter, Wheaties has a real bargain for you. On the side of every Wheaties package is a valuable coupon for exclusive Queen Bess pattern silverware, designed and created in Tudor plate by Oneida Community Silversmiths. For far less than you dream, you can own a complete set of this beautiful, luxurious silverware that reflects your personality. For example, some individual pieces cost as little as five cents with General Mills coupons. 
That's the secret of this wonderful bargain offer, General Mills coupons. In fact, the only way you can get beautiful Queen Bess pattern is with these coupons. You'll find General Mills coupons mighty easy to get, too. They come with Wheaties, Cheerios, Bisquick, Betty Crocker pie crust mix, gold metal flour, and many other General Mills products. So watch for General Mills coupons. Save them. They count up fast. Almost before you know it, you can be the proud owner of a complete set of Queen Best Pattern silverware. to continue. Dan Reed was bound hand and foot and placed on a cot in another room. Dave and Pete returned to the living room of the farmhouse, where Carlos and two other crooks waited. The boy can't get away now, Carlos. Eh, too bad he showed up to spoil your plans here. Uh, I saw that white horse you rode, Carlos. I'd like to have that horse. Give it to me. Oh, if he's such a fine animal, perhaps I should keep him for myself. Let's go look him over. Come on, Dave. Where would a boy get such a beautiful horse as this? Finest I've ever seen. I shall ride him right now. If he suits me, I'll keep him. I'll give you my own. <laughs> Easy there. Hey, where do... He has much spirit, no? I'll steal you. Hold him, Dave. The outlaw leader waited until Dave grasped Victor's bridle. Then he vaulted into the saddle. Uh, so, now I shall see how he runs. Get up. In spite of the bucking, Carlos managed to stay in the saddle. But Victor suddenly whirled, then bent his head low and kicked high with his back hooves. Carlos, totally unprepared for Victor's action, flew over the horse's head and landed flat on his back. Carlos, are you hurt? Oh, such a beast. that they wonder every bone is not broken. I'll help you out. That horse. Why did you let him get away, Dave? He moved so quick, I couldn't stop him. Oh, let's go inside. The Lone Ranger and Tonto returned to their camp and were waiting for Dan to arrive from town with supplies he was told to buy. They were surprised and worried when Victor galloped into camp without his young master. Tonto, Dan must have met with an accident. Ah, look, saddlebags empty. Him not reach town, seem like. But him gone long time. If Dan were able, even though he were hurt, he'd send a message to us. We'll search his saddlebags, Tonto, and see if there's a note in one of them. Ah. Hello, look here. Kimasabe, that big silver thunderbird, fellow on train, wearing watch chain. Yes, you and Dan told me about that. You said the outlaws on the train took it. That's right. I don't know how Dan got it, but he may have met one of those crooks. He may be in trouble. And what we do? We'll take Victor and follow his tracks back to the place where he left Dan. Let's hurry. Uh-huh. The ground was soft, and the imprints of Victor's shoes were easy to follow. Later, the masked man and Indian approached the farmhouse along the branch road, which was bordered with woods. Otto, this branch trail leads to a small farmhouse. Ah. Oh, oh, easy, no, silly, no, fella. Oh. We're right in among the trees from here, Tonto. We don't want to be seen by anyone who might be there. When we get closer, we'll go on foot. Come on, Silver. Come, come on, boy. Come, fella. The Lone Ranger and Tonto left their horses in hiding, then moved cautiously on foot through the woods toward the rear of the farmhouse. The sun was going down and cast long shadows behind the building. I think I can manage to reach the back of the house without being seen, Tonto. You wait here in case I run into trouble, and you'll be in a position to help. Uh The masked man moved forward cautiously. The yard was covered with heavy brush that helped to conceal his approach. Soon he reached the rear of the farmhouse. He saw a closed door which presumably led into the kitchen. Beyond that was a back window. He moved on and stopped at the window. There was still light enough for him to see into a bedroom. He saw Dan lying on the cot with his hands and feet tied. The Lone Ranger quickly entered through the window and freed the boy. Then, using the window, the Lone Ranger and Dan dropped quietly to the ground. And hidden by the tall brush, made their way to the woods behind the farmhouse where Tonto was waiting. You find Dan, Kimasari. That good, right. 
Look, he must have Man, take saddled horses to back door, a farmhouse. They must stop him from leaving. Dan, you wait here. Come on, Toto. Uh-huh. The Lone Ranger and Toto disappeared into the tall brush-like shadows as they went toward the farmhouse. Inside, Carlos and his men were preparing to leave. The boy's gone, Carlos. What? The ropes were cut somehow. Hey, Carlos, we better forget him and get away from here fast. Wait, no one is to go outside yet. Well, why wait? The boy's wait, gone. Wait, that boy did not cut the rope from his own ankles and wrist, Joe. Someone else did it. Hey. That means others may be outside right now. I told you we should have had somebody on guard outside near the trail. Yeah, I did not think it necessary. We have always been safe at this farmhouse. Wait. The brush grows wild right up to the farmhouse. I'll go outside and do some scouting. The rest of you keep your eyes open and your guns ready. If you go out that door, somebody may see you. I shall drop out the back window like the boy and his friend did. I'll go now. Carlos cautiously went through the window and moved warily through the brush. He began circling the house. As he came around one side of the farmhouse, he saw a figure crouched near a side window. Carlos quietly moved up behind the figure. Then... This is a gun at your back, senor. It's smarter than I thought, Paso. Keep your voice low. There must be others with you. Keep your hands high. Turn it around. All right. Caramba, a masked hombre. But no matter. I do not like to be spied upon, senor. I have bullets for such as you. But do not use bullets. What? You drop gun. Another one behind me. Drop gun quick. Good work, Toto. I'll take his gun. A tie and gagging. Uh, Tavo quickly gagged Carlos and tied his hands behind his back. Then he and the Lone Ranger took Carlos back among the trees where Dan was waiting. Golly, you've caught the leader. Yes, Dan. Time to a tree, Toto. Uh, you stand there. Let me tie you. Dan, did you hear any of the names of the men in there? Yes, sir. One is Pete. Then there's Dave, Joe, and Wes. Good. Finish tying him, Toto. Uh, you tied plenty good. Here's his gun, Dan. Stay here and watch him. But don't go close to him, even though he's tied. All right, sir. Come on, Toto. We'll try to get the others. Darkness was setting in as the two men went back through the brush toward the farmhouse. There was no light inside. The men waited anxiously for Carlos to come back. Hey, hey, come on. Rest there. Hey, that was Carlos calling from the window in the other room. He wants me. He must want me to go through that window. Carlos. Where are you? Right here, amigo. Time, Toto. Pull him out of sight. Uh-huh. I am tired now. Me drag him into brush. In a moment, Toto came back to join the masked man. Once more, the trick was tried. Pete, Pete, we need you here too. Come to the window. Inside, Pete and the others had heard. But Pete didn't start at once. Well, why don't you go? Carlos called for you. Carlos is no fool, Joe. He'd have us use the back door, not that window. Huh? I'll sneak back there and try to see out. But I'm getting suspicious. Pete moved quietly through the darkened back room. He stood to one side of the open window and cautiously looked out. At that moment, the Lone Ranger moved close again to repeat the call. Pete, I did not come out. Pete waited until the masked man stepped back. Then he hurriedly went into the main room. Hey, that wasn't Carlos. I could make out a tall hombre wearing a mask. Well, he was trying to trick us. Carlos and Dave must have been caught. Yeah. Our only chance is to get to the horses. They're waiting outside the kitchen door. Come on. Now move quietly. Once we hit leather, make for the woods and keep going. All right. Come on. Now run for it. Hey, the horses are gone. Head for the trees over there, quick. Wes took a bullet, Pete. Leave him. Come on. Go ahead. These trees will protect us. Now let them have it. In the twilight, the Lone Ranger and Tonto exchanged shots with the two remaining outlaws. But the trees provided safety for them, and it looked as though they might escape. But suddenly, others joined the fray. The sheriff and his posse, who had been on the way to town after a day's search, heard the shots and came through the woods behind Pete and Joe. Now I'm hit! Wait! Hold your fire! I give up! (laughs) Well, there's another one, man. Pete, you are the sheriff. (laughs) Sheriff, you remember friend who wear masks? The Indian. Tonto! (laughs) Say, I should have known you two would be in this. I'm sure glad to see you both again, mister. Thanks, Sheriff. 
These are two of Carlos Paso's gang. A great work. I found even if Carlos and the others got away. We'll get some information from these crooks. Carlos and the others are already prisoners. What? I suggest you send a few men with Tonto to bring them here. Uh, sure, with pleasure. Some of you men be smart and help Tonto bring those coyotes here. <laughs> Three of the men of the posse went with Tonto and soon returned with Carlos, Dave, and the wounded man, Wes. Dan Reed brought Silver and Scout. Brought Silver and Scout, sir. Oh, good enough. Uh, here, Carlos. Two other crooks. Uh, mister, uh, I don't know how this all came about, but I'm mighty happy to get my hands on these men, especially Carlos Paso. The Spanish government will be glad to learn he's been captured, Sheriff. Let me take gag from leader's mouth now. He want to talk. Maybe he... Oh. There. <laughs> Caramba, that strange bird. She is our undoing. The thunderbird of Indians punish evil ones. That's what most Indians believe. <laughs> sure, Tonto. But you were wise enough to know that Thunderbird couldn't have done much without you and the mass man to help. <laughs> Sheriff, we'll stop by to see you before we leave the territory. Right. Adios. 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 Oh, I do not know just how all this happened. That I, Carlos Paso, who laughed at the law in Spain, should be captured by a masked man who is in league with the sheriff. The moon away, Carlos. When they put the noose around your neck, remember this. The masked man who outsmarted you on your gang is none other than the Lone Ranger. I don't see. When Bill's at bat, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. You know about Cheerios, how good Cheerios taste, and how this wonderful toasted oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O is so good for you. A Cheerios and milk breakfast really starts the day right. It's real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. They help to give you healthy nerves and muscles. So have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen.